All right, we're turning our attention to hurling and I'm delighted to talk about Pro Hurling. It's Ireland's first hurling e-academy. It's aimed at boys and girls aged 5 to 16, giving a unique insight into the skills some of the country's best hurlers value most. You can sign up at prohurling.ie. It's the brainchild of Cork legend Patrick Horgan and he's with us this evening to talk about it. Patrick, good afternoon to you. How are you getting on? Hi Joe, how are you? Yeah, How's very good. Where did the where did the idea come from for this? Um, I suppose the idea has been there for uh, I wouldn't say a long time, but I suppose a, a year or so. Um, but I suppose what uh, what really got it going is seeing even my own um, niece and nephews um, just constantly on the iPad and constantly on the PlayStation and just in their own kind of world, like so. Um, so they're there. So what we think is they're there to stay, and we're not going to get them off them. So, is there any way we could uh, possibly get them to look at their iPad at, at something that they're interested in, like hurling, and uh, then get them outdoors and uh, practice what they learn on the screen? So instead of just constantly being on the screen and going day to day and not even knowing what they what they what time of the day they have. So, um, yeah, that was probably the what was behind it. I I hadn't. At any stage, when we were talking about this, I hadn't considered that actually what you're trying to do is to uh, help parents get their kids off their screens. That is like a, an amazing sales pitch right there, Patrick. Sign me up. If you can stop my kids from spending time on screens and uh, going completely crazy when we turn them off, then happy days. Every parent in the world is going to pay seven ninety nine a month for that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good value, obviously. But um, I think if that's, if that's all we could do with this, uh, I think it would be a win for us. Uh, what they get when they go on and sign up is um, they get a video every Saturday morning and it started last week now so last week was the first video um, there'll be another one tomorrow morning Saturday at 9 o'clock and um, yeah what they get is they sign up they get a coach every month I'm the first coach um, for the month so they get four videos from me uh, with four different skills so next up then I think will be Lee Chin and possibly Noel McGrath and Amy O'Connor after that um, yeah so they get their four skills uh, we're starting off at the like at the beginning with uh, 20 basic skills of hurling uh, and then we'll broaden it out to drills and um, training sessions as well after that. So I suppose we're just trying to take off the basics first then uh, put something in place where like if you've never played hurling or if you're really good at hurling, there's a level for you somewhere in there. Um, so we break down each skill into three different levels, uh, beginners, medium and um, really tough. Uh, and what we do then is at the end of the video we give homework and they can they can go off and get their parents to record them doing the skill and send it back into us on the website. There's a link, there's a, a tab there that they can put their videos back up and um, we'll we look over that uh, and six times a year then we'll have kind of what what will be called it's a, like a live show where we'll go over what uh, kids have sent in to us and how they can they can improve again or whatever they need, whether that's a, an alley session now for this live video or just a, a general chat. Um, they'll also get uh, one fundamental movement video every month and one um, healthy living and eating video every month from a professional in, in that field. So uh, I think overall um, it's, it's really good value for what they what they get. Are you a coach at heart? Would, is this something that you're interested in and, and will always be doing for the rest of your life, even after you retire, whenever that might be? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I like I like um, I like constant improvement. Really, you know. So um, I would think like no matter what skill you have in hurling, or no matter how good you are at it, I think um, there's always room to get better at it. Uh, and it's just finding a way to to improve yourself all the time is um, is probably something I think is key to to coaching. And does that apply to your life off the field as well in terms of diet? Like, are you are you uh, Tom Brady? Uh, the only ice cream you eat is avocado ice cream. That kind of stuff at this stage of your career. Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like that. No, I I, I wouldn't be as uh, as much as that. Um, obviously, we have to watch what we eat uh, with the level of hurling we play. But uh, I try to enjoy myself uh, whenever I can. Um, but I just mean when it comes to, to training uh, and and the skills of the game. Uh, that's something I would. I would be thinking a lot of is, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of doing it all right now, but um, is there any way I can just tweak it and maybe do something better that um, would give me more an, more of an advantage when I'm playing? When you've got the responsibility of being a free taker, I'm always very interested in that because sometimes it feels like the best free takers have found a rhythm and a routine and they've never changed it because to change it would be almost superstitious and then others have constantly changed the whole way through because that's what they need it's kind of the Park Harrington of um, 
of uh, free taking routines where you're no matter what what you're doing you're never happy with it. I know I, I, it's not it's not an either or. There's obviously a scale in between. What what's your situation when it comes to that? Um, we're free taking. Um, geez, when I when I was growing up through uh, through the underage and stuff, I would have changed a lot now, um, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have ever set on uh, a specific way of taking freeze, but. I think over the last, um, I suppose, since I since I came onto the the car panel, I suppose I have a, a routine that I've never changed, and that's because I probably practiced it so much that I trust it, and I trust from when I place the ball to when I eventually hit it, I trust everything that I'm doing is um, is the best is is probably the best practice for me. So that's what I've practiced. That's what I know. That's I suppose built into muscle memory and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, like I, I don't even have to practice that much take and freeze anymore, and I don't. Um, just maybe five or ten minutes before training, but um, I just trust it, uh, trust the routine, and um, it kind of works for me at the moment. Yeah. So you've you've not perfected it, but you've you've reached a situation where you're absolutely comfortable with that, and to go back and revisit that would actually be counterproductive. Possibly, I I, I don't want to take the risk. Uh, I just think at the moment, uh, with with from the the start of the the free taking routine to the to the end, I think um, I'm at a level that grand has to be always hurling always needs to be practiced and striking needs to be practiced. But I think in my mind I'm confident. So like I'm I've confidence in in the routine I have, and uh, that's probably the most important thing. And was that the same? Is is the routine exactly the same as it was from when you came onto the court panel and were charged with the responsibility of taking freeze? Yeah, I would think it's it's about the same. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, I haven't tried to change anything, so in my mind, I'm doing the same thing. And did anybody ever give you feedback, or like, was there somebody who helped you to get to that point where you were like, okay, that's my work done on that? Uh, no, it's just kind of I, I'd feel it myself. Like, right. um, if I wasn't doing something right, um, I'd, I'd sense it, and I think every player is like that uh, with parts of their game. So if they're, if something is letting them down, there's no one needs to tell them. Uh, I think they'll know it themselves first and uh, they'll, they'll try and correct it themselves. Okay. In terms of the continuous in improvement that you were talking about and, and to just to go back to the coaching team, where do you look for for that? Again, is, is that as much in training, you're trying stuff, uh, you know, if you're in an alley, you're trying stuff or is it actually talking to other coaches and other players about um, about little bits that you're trying to iron out or trying to, to improve on? Yeah, it, might, it could be anything. Uh, I, I get a lot of it from the, the players that we play with now because uh, they all kind of think the same way um, and it's, it's, it might be only something small something that I can't even think of now but it might be something like um, that is happening you, you might be doing something but your opposition is what they do to counteract that is what they're doing so then you're trying to go to the next level up from that again it might be even picking the ball protecting the ball anything like that um, and uh, that's that's a conversation I like to have with players that uh, that I'm playing with now that you can have them chats and back and forward and what are you seeing and what do you feel when you're when you're in that situation and I tell them what I feel when I'm in that situation and it's kind of back and forward and I think if everyone can uh, can grow from it um, it's valuable you know? As a matter of interest are most of those colleagues with your forward are most of those uh, conversations with your forward colleagues or your def- defensive rivals in the uh, training sessions that you're having so the internal uh, games? Yeah, it could be both. It's not even games. Um, it's just situations uh, within games, you know. So if um, I could be talking to forwards today and maybe we we'll, we'll just have a chat about, you know, what are you seeing? What, like, they might just bring something up over the blue and we we'll just have a, a conversation about it. Or it could be uh, defenders and what they see uh, other players doing and it might be something we uh, would like to look at. And yeah, it's back and forward. And anything to improve the team, is, I suppose, is, uh, is, is something worthwhile. Is, was that always your aspect when you got on the, the team first were you like this is all going to be fine I just need to look after myself or were you always kind of plugged into the fact that like everybody on that team needs to get better collectively if you are actually going to win in All-Ireland yeah um, I suppose at the level we're playing at uh, especially now with the amount of time that we put into it um, you know when you're on the field or, or when you're around those players like um, if you're not willing to get better all the time uh, I think uh it's probably the wrong place to be because um, the amount of improvement with uh, with like situations in hurling and on the field and even at training uh, have gone to such a level that uh, you'll be left behind fairly fast if uh, if you don't go with them. You, you've talked about the amount of time that you put into it, and it's so much a fundamental part of your identity, I suspect, as as a player. Um, 
are you able to separate you as a person from you as a core curler? Because it, it's been a, a long road to get to the stage where you're at now, where you're, you know, you're on the verge of, of breaking the all-time championship scoring record. It might happen. Hopefully, it does for you over the course of of the the Munster Championship. It's an incredible achievement to get to that point. But are you able to kind of also then not just be a core curler? Is that if, if that question makes sense? Yeah, um, I suppose early on when I joined the panel, that's probably hard because everything is about hurling and everything's like not everything still is but i mean when i'm when i'm at training i'm at training and, and um there's nothing else going on or when i'm when i go to the alley i'm at the alley so that that applies as well like when i'm um when i'm at home like um i try not to think about hurling too much and if i do i kind of i'm conscious of that and, and try try just enjoy like i suppose the people i'm around and uh you know whenever i go to friends or anything like that i try, try to be where i am at, at that time like um and that, probably, and that helps on the field uh, more as well in the long run as well. When you joined the panel and were around the fringes of it breaking onto it, the remnants of the great Cork team that put it up to the greatest Kilkenny team that we've ever seen and one of the greatest teams of all time were still there. So there would have been a sense and an expectation and an understanding of what was required to win an All-Ireland. For you guys now, you've got to try and write your own history and be a group that ends, in Cork terms, a famine. What's the difference like around the panel now from then? Um, it's hard to tell because I think uh, when you're at different stages of your career, like um, you think differently. And at the time, like when I came into the panel, it was like based. You just said it. They were all legends, and they were they were all players that I would have looked up to, and I would have went to all their games when I was 12, 13, 14 and thought, "Geez, these were the gods." Like, but um, I suppose no. Uh, it, it could possibly be the same for young fellas that are coming in now, but uh, I see it differently as um, like you know everybody's there now, and I think it's I think the group that is there uh, now and have been for the last couple of years are um, they're extremely tight, and um, like I think we all not, I know now that everybody on that panel is, is aiming for the the same goal, and uh, we're all on the same page, and I think that's really important now as well. What was the winter like after last year's All Ireland final? Uh, I suppose it wasn't that nice losing an All Ireland final the way we lost it. Um, you know, we played great hurling to get there, and um, yeah, just I suppose it's disappointing. We could we can't do nothing about it now. Um, it was disappointing at the time, but um, yeah, there's, there's not much we can do. Like only just get back in the wagon, and I think we have, and we have been impressive um, in a lot of games in the league. Um, obviously was disappointing to lose the final but I think um, yeah it, it feels like we're kind of on a on a bit of a journey and we're we're getting a small bit of consistency into our play like over the course of the whole league I think um, there was a lot of uh, positives to take out of it Does it matter how you lose an All-Ireland final? Like if you lose an All-Ireland final and, and you know there's, there, you've seen both sides of it like um, added time to, to lose one uh, and again it's essentially over at half time as well like uh, I presume the pain is the same it's just of a different magnitude or like I guess how, is there a difference in processing a defeat as complete as the one last year uh, does that make you go and um, question more about what you're doing and just making sure that everybody has more I don't know more self-reflection than after a, a game where it's a toss of a coin yeah it depends on what way you look at it I suppose um, if you if you try to look for a positive out of losing the final that way um, we just didn't show up on the, we didn't play at all on the day. So I think that was clear for everybody to see. Um, and then in the back of your mind, you're thinking, well, if we do play, could we get closer? Could it have been a game? Um, do you know? And the other side of that then, of course, is uh, you say, oh, like, grand, we lost. We're like, uh, we'd have preferred to be in the game and having some sort of a chance. And uh, yeah, it just depends on what we look at it. But um how do you guys look at it? How do you look at it? I look at it in a way that we just didn't play, and I like we all know we're better than that. Um, and if we if we get a chance again to be in a, a big final like that, we'll have to we'll have to perform. We didn't that day for for a minute, so um, I suppose there's a in in a way that's something um, that's something to kind of hang on to. That uh, you know we are a good side. We just have to perform. We didn't in that final for. For any amount of time, so um, that's something we we'll, we we'll look for. We we'll, we we'll look to get. And look, I think that makes a lot of sense. And and even the point you were making about playing loads of good stuff in the league also makes sense. In in that regard, like the semi final and the final are completely different performances. Um, 
is there an explanation for what happened in the league final that you're comfortable with and can park in advance of the Munster Championship or is there some stuff that you all need to go back and look at the video and go well if we do that again the same result is going to happen again no not really I think um, like I think uh, if we take it that we're going to judge one game and uh, change everything based on that one game I think like we'll be changing constantly because like you have to go on a kind of a, a journey with I suppose uh systems of playing game the way the type of game you want to try to play and um i think if you believe in it enough you, you'll find a way with that uh but if you're chopping and changing and you don't trust anything um it's hard it, it becomes way harder then um there was a lot of positives the other night uh against waterford um and we've taken it we hit a lot of wides we hit like 10 15 more wides than them i think i think no i'm not sure of that um and there was about five or six minutes left in the game, and I think there was like four points in it. So then they killed us with a with the next goal, I suppose. But up until that point, even we we could have said we were in a game, having not done much right the the whole game, you know. But overall in the league, as I say, we got a lot of uh, game time into a lot of new players, and um, you know we I suppose we played we played well for. The whole league, yeah. Up until I spoke final. Well, and and I, the other thing is that like we've kind of for whatever reason forgotten the the difference between the league and the round robins is absolutely intense and immense. Like the round robin in Munster, in particular, has been one of the great sports competitions in uh, in the world. It just has been an absolute cutthroat over the last number of years. And I know the league is a bit closer this year than it has been in previous years. So maybe there's more reason to be confident that league form is going to. Um, go straight through to the championship but I'm just not sure like it's it, it's a brand new competition and so everybody starts with a clean slate yeah part of it uh, part of it in two weeks is you, you can't change much so if you like if you were over the form say two weeks ago you're kind of hope and you're in form um, in two weeks time so I think with us uh, we've shown that we you know we were in form there for a lot of the league and, and I suppose for us uh, how do we just reproduce that again uh, on a big day on the 17th of Parky Cueve. We didn't produce it against Waterford, but we know it's there anyway, and we know, um, to know if, if we can produce it on a, on a bigger day. Is, just there, see what is there anything about the, the early, like it, it, the Munster Championship is over by the end of May, the, the actual final itself is the, the first weekend in June, but the round robin stage is over the 22nd of May. It's not the best weather in Ireland. Like, it definitely June and July and August is really the best month to hurl if you want uh, top of the ground stuff. Is there anything in that that you think is, is might have an impact on results and score lines this year? I know all the pitches that we're going to be playing on are, are really good. Parky Cueve, Torless, Walsh Park, um, even in Clare. All the pitches are savage now. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't say that's, that's going to dictate much. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing that the, the championship has been played like the way it is, you know, early and, and week to week. Um, otherwise, we'd be, you'd be training every week anyway. So you might as well have a game to look forward. Is it enjoyable this part just before it starts? Is there just a little bit of butterflies rising at this point going, ooh, this is all about to kick off? Yeah, um, this is about the time where, like I'd say, fellas are thinking, like, you know, you need, to, you need to be on your game in, you know, two weeks' time. So I think a lot of... Uh, training like would be hard not not to training be hard but I suppose fellas are kind of focused in on what they need to do more um, rather than like six months ago when the championship is in the distance I think it's kind of fine tuning everything now making sure you've uh, all the the ducks in a row I suppose and from your perspective is it actually a, a more enjoyable game to play now than it was when you broke into the team like because there's been a you've, you've kind of been right there for the evolution you've seen all of the different counties bring their different styles and how the game has evolved and you know you've, you've been at all Ireland's bookend in that period what's it actually like to play in from your perspective as a forward um it's changed a bit but at the same time it's it's uh yeah i, I can't see too much too many differences like um the fitness levels obviously are gone through the roof from from all players like um but other than that hurling like hurling wise and all that and um, pretty much stayed the same um Maybe I maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but um, I just think the only thing that's after changing is fellas are gone ridiculously fit. Uh, last question for you then: If anybody is getting the video tomorrow morning, what can they expect from you? Uh, tomorrow morning, um, 
I think the jab lift is tomorrow. So that'll be broke down into someone who has never jab lift before, uh, someone who can do it around their kitchen and stuff, but they just need to do the next the next step up. And uh, the last one is a uh, one-handed jab lift uh, sprinting and protecting the ball as uh, as you raise it so that's a pretty tricky one well listen if anybody wants to sign up it's prohurling.ie we wish you the very best of luck with the season Patrick thanks a million for joining us cheers thanks for, thanks for having me thanks it's Cork legend Patrick Horgan there launching a new business Pro Hurling is Ireland's first hurling e-academy aimed at kids aged 5 to 16 giving a unique insight into the skills some of the country's best hurlers value most